Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Now is the time. Somebody say, now is the time. Now is the time. There is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow, but there is now. Let's go. Hallelujah. If you want to do something, you do it now. The farmer that will plant, that will sow his seed, in his mind is already seeing the harvest. He's doing it now. Because if he folds back his hands and look, there's a proverb in Africa that says, sit down, look. Okay. Now is the time. There's no tomorrow, there's no yesterday. If you want to love, you want to bless, you don't bless yesterday, you don't bless tomorrow. You bless. Yeah. If you want to love, you don't love yesterday, love tomorrow, you love now. If you want to live, you don't live yesterday, neither do you live tomorrow, you live now. Yeah. And um, this is why Jesus made a statement. He said, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice or the trumpet. Okay? Yes. And they will now arise out because they've heard the truth. Those who are dead in their Adamic sin. Right. You are dead when you don't actually know your true substance, who you are. The dead can't see, they can't hear, they can't talk. You don't need to wait for somebody to put your body underneath the ground for death. People are already dead in their humanity. Okay? But the good news is that those who are sleeping in their human sense of life, in their human graves, Humanity is a graveyard. No matter how beautiful it looks, no matter how beautiful the coffin looks, the dead bones are in there and they stink. Okay? So don't be deceived by outer appearances, how glorious the appearance may be. A dead body is a dead body. You don't see, you don't hear, you don't bite. There's no knowledge in the grave. But the hour comes and now is. We are already hear the trumpet. Don't wait for tomorrow. Nothing will happen tomorrow. God is not going to do anything tomorrow. God is. If you have books on prophecy, something will happen in Israel, something will happen tomorrow, burn them, throw them away. Now is. And you know those books are, are bestsellers? Those books sell more than anything. Something will happen, you know. If something happens, and so what? It doesn't change the truth. Now is the time to live. Hear the truth and find your place among the cloud, the glory cloud of God. Everybody has to relocate himself in the cloud of God. Okay, Jesus at the end of the ministry, you see this in the book of Acts chapter 1, you can read that when you go back home. Jesus at the end of his ministry was lifted up out of the earth and parted away with a what a cloud. Okay, now if you go to the sky to look for him, you will not find him. Those things were symbolic. Deliberately, deliberate signs to teach us spiritual truth. All right, he had prayed. He prayed the prayer, "Father, glorify me with the glory I had in you before I became a human being. Before I entered the sensation of flesh and blood." You see his prayer? He didn't pray for 
you know, any other thing. Because in our humanity, there are certain things we put as priority, which, is, which are not really priority. Priority is to be found in Him. That is the thing that should be, because if I know myself the way I am known of God, every other thing follows spontaneously. Because the creation is mine. Okay? In Him, I am not poor. I am not forsaken. All those things are in your mind, you know? Okay? The person that who fulfills his rich according to the standards of this world might be a poor person. Very poor in, in the real sense of it. And the person who will be look poor in this world might be even the richest. Okay? Jesus gave the parable and he gave the proverb the way of covetousness. It is not how much you can garner in this material world that amounts to richness, but how much you know God. Knowing Him is knowing yourself. Hmm. That is riches. That is true riches in glory that can never be taken away from you. So at the end of his ministry, Jesus returned back to the cloud. Like the cloud is actually an allegory. It's a proverbial presentation of the invisible, immortal, incorruptible body of glory of God. Whenever God will speak in the Old Testament, he spoke out of a cloud. Moses was entered into the cloud, and when he was in the cloud, the Lord spoke to him. Okay? It always spoke out of a cloud. His presence over Israel was like a cloud by day and fire by night. It all talks about an invisible, immortal, incorporeal body, a spiritual body. Can you hold the cloud? Can you hold fire? He makes his ministers fire. Hallelujah. Amen. He rides upon the clouds. God rides on the clouds. And he makes his ministers a flame of fire. Now the ministers are not those who go to Bible school and hold, wear big suits on Sundays. Eh? That's not minister. All these are those things of this present world that will pass away. That's our illusion of our religion. A minister is the one that walks holy and serves the Lord. He walks in the name of the Lord. And like Jesus Christ says, where my ministers, where I am is where my minister or my servants will be. The ministers and the servants of God are also the angels of God. They are all interchangeable in the same meaning. Jesus, in his human, Jesus as a man, was an angel. He was a minister of God. He was a pastor of God. Paul was a minister, was an angel. Anybody who can hear this word and stand in the gap is also a minister and an angel of God. And what the Father glorifies you with himself. That's why it says he make his ministers a flame of fire. That is the glorification of the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you understand why Chandra, Mission, Abednego, they can't be touched by fire. Because what? They are servants of God. They serve the Lord. And those kind of people, when you serve the Lord, you are spirit and Fire can't touch spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you go out there to put yourself in fire today, the vultures will be having barbecue tonight. <laughs> and I can assure you for that. So to don't, don't, don't even think of it unless you are, you are led by the spirit. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I watched on the YouTube someday. Somebody was trying to prove himself to be a man of God, a one big fat black guy. 
and the poor, you know, hot water on him. <laughs> but the guy, if you see the running, the way he ran for his feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So, but don't, you don't need to test it that way. Okay, these are allegories. Amen? Jesus walked on the water. You don't have to go and start walking on water. Except the function comes by God, and you know it that time. Nobody can explain that. But don't read the book and say Jesus walks on water, or can go to walk on water. Praise God. The fishes will rejoice him. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. So Jesus was taken up into the cloud, and he now remains in the cloud. Jesus, the man, was caught up to meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds, and so shall he remain with the Lord forever. Have you heard of the rapture? First of the Thessalonians. People have been waiting for the rapture for many years, and they've not, it has not yet happened, okay? Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. The message here I'm sharing is will you discover your place in the cloud. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Are we there? Thessalonians is in the New Testament. I think it's after Timothy. 4.16 Okay For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, are you see that this is what we comfort ourselves with? This is the hope of our calling to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air in the cloud. Now, the outer religious world is waiting for a physical event to happen. Where one night God will appear in the sky. With, and, and you know, you have these things on YouTube, you have them all over, films on the rapture, and they are best sellers. Okay? And when we preach messages like this, just a few people, a few hundreds, just listen to them. Now, let us just understand something. This is the hope of our calling. Alright? The trump. The shout of the archangel, the shout of God, the trump. This is the same thing as the voice of the Son of Man. Let me put it in a very simple language. When they hear the message of truth, that's the trumpet. We want to see big, big things happening. But some people can testify that this message that they heard is sounded in their heart like what? Like a trumpet. Because things will never be the same again. This trumpet or this good news is what is able to raise you from the dead. Raise you out of the sense of mortality. Raise you out of the sense of corruptibility. Raise you out of the sense of being from below here back to the original state or statue of the Son of God who is incorruptible immortal. He raises you up and spontaneously now you begin to walk in the identity that you truly are from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. You begin to relocate, relocate yourself in the cloud in the air. Now the air is the spirit. When you air is in the spirit. And you shall, walk, you shall be with the Lord, caught up to meet the Lord. That is to unite with the Lord who is the Spirit. You are caught up to unite with the Lord, and so shall you be with the Lord forever. Ever. Console yourselves with 
this or good, you know. I and the Father are one forever. No more two. Because as far as there are two, there will always be tribulation, oh, fear of death, fear of something will change, fear of something will be taken away from you. But when you know that I am the Lord, that is my name, I am the one that lives from generation to generation. When you come to this realization, nothing can ever come out of peace and joy again. Every pain we've had, every sorrow we've had, is because of all these things we acquire in our human life. Isn't it? We carry loads, luggages in this world. Okay? And they look good, isn't it? Yes. But when you begin to discover yourself and hear the truth, you begin to let go of all that is in this world so that you can hold on to the excellence of the Lord. Somebody said, but brother, I cannot leave anything. Well, they will leave you eventually. Okay? Isn't it? No matter how rich, how big, how prosperous you are, you have to leave it. Okay? You have to let it. So why don't you just, just obey the gospel now and be a blessing to others? That to hold on to vanity. Praise God. See, the message we preach here is quite different from the outer world. Okay, everything is pointing to the return of the, the sons of God back to their place in immortality and life. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus says, Some of you standing here will never die. And now is the time. You can just. Put on what you know what you know what Paul writes his message. He says what put on Christ. Put on Christ. It's consciousness. Put on a new awareness, a new consciousness. And Christ is, is not a man. Christ is the one that has been from eternity. Walk now in that. Because we don't walk by sight, but by faith. Wind. Walk into the things that are known of men. And now is the time that we do it, not tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I am with the Lord forever in the cloud, that is incorruptibility, immortality. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? These things are repeated all over the Bible, but the eyes of men are blinded that they cannot see them. It's free of charge. You don't have to pay me tithes to know. Do you pay me tithes? No. Because it is yours. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at him. First, first, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, what does he say? He says about, speaks about two men. One that is of the earth, earthy, and there is one that is from heaven. And says the one from heaven is the glorious man of God, and the one from the earth is the Adamic man who is inglorious, who lives in death. But he says that we have borne the image of the earth in our humanity. We shall also bear the image of the earth. Amen. Everybody, yeah. Forget what the brother or sister did to you. That's true, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the earlier you do, the better. Praise God. I'll just add that. All right. If you don't want to go through the horrors of hell and death, obey him now. That's true, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. We shall bear the image of the one from heaven who is the Lord. There's only one Lord. There are no two. You shall be a human. You shall walk in the nature of the one who is from heaven. Then Paul goes on to say, well, it's a great mystery. How is it possible? 
How is it possible that a worm can fly in the air? A caterpillar can fly in the air like a butterfly. I will show you a mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. I will show you a mystery. Oh, hallelujah. At the sounding of the last trump. When you say last trumpet, what does it mean? It's truth. When truth comes, it dispels every other voice. That's the truth. The voice of the spirit, the spirit of truth. He shall announce to you things to come. And he will guide you into that thing to come. That's what the spirit is given to you for. Amen. We've turned it upside down. Everybody has the same the spirit is for this spirit is for that. The spirit is to show you things to come and to guide you into that thing to come. <clears throat> when John the, the Apostle was in the sky, when he saw the Alpha and the Omega, he says, Come, I will show you things to come. Things to come in God's kingdom. The new age of life. Not your humanity. God didn't come here to solve any problem here or to, or to fix human systems. God did not come here to fix the systems of men. At times we are trying to solve human problems too much. What Jesus did was carry his luggage and told his disciples, You want to come with me? Let's go on. He's not there trying to settle any problem. Some of us want to become peacemakers. Some of us want to save everybody. Save yourself first. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. God, I've learned so much. You know? I've learned so much. And I really thank God for experience. I've learned so much. Amen. The way of man. Because when you fall, you come to your grave and put a big cross there and say, That was the man of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let's move on. It says that at the sound of the last trumpet, Hallelujah. we shall be changed. The trump of God. We shall be what? Change. The corruptible shall put on incorruptible. The mortal shall put on immortality. You, do you want a change to happen physically? You will never see it's happening. There's a change as you are hearing the truth. You are raised up physically, in, consciously, into a new man. And that man can never die. Amen. The rags, the clothes will grow old. The nation shall become old and worthy and die of. But I, I live forever. That is the Lord from heaven. It's happening now. The trumpet is already sounding. Do you believe the trumpet is sounding? It is sounding. It's been sounding for me for years now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. And that is how we can be found in Him in the cloud. Because that represents immortality, incorruptibility, life. And immortality, only the Lord has. Life only the Lord has. And that life is also us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you a privileged bunch to hear such things? To find your place among the clouds? Hallelujah. Don't you mean, isn't it time now to allow religion to be a thing of the past? And let us focus on the real thing, what, what, what we are actually called, what the gospel really is. Because the gospel has been adulterated. It's a lie out there. It's not, it's not, it's not gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Jesus himself came down. He was made lower than angel. So that he can partake in flesh and blood. Now, angel in this sense represents spirit. Incorruptible, immortal spirit. Jesus was made lower than that state. He put on what? Flesh. 
He died. That was death. And he appeared in this realm to defeat death so that those who are in bondage to death all their life, fear of death, he began to loosen them and set them free from the fear of death. Do you know this world that we live in? People live in fear of death. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. Every step you make, I don't want to die. Every step you make, you want to preserve your life on the earth. Isn't it? Yes. Every book you read is how to live longer. Amen? Amen. Of course, we should not be careless, but we can come to a realm where there is no more death. And it happens to your consciousness. Paul, who spoke about immortality, is he here physically today? But I tell you the truth, Paul never died. Peter, he wrote a letter in his last days that I'm about to leave, drop my tabernacle. That's what he said. He, he had realized that this was a tabernacle. I'm about to drop my own tabernacle. And he tried to tell the brethren to keep in remembrance the things he has preached. Hallelujah. The way he was is the way he is today. That's Peter, that's Paul, that's Jesus. The way they are is the way they were and the way they will always be. Because they have rediscovered themselves. We have to stand by faith in Christ, not by sight. Then we begin to sense that death is no more. Isn't it written in the book of Revelation? That there shall be no more death. Amen? Amen. No more death. death. Yes. It says, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither the chapter be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, do you know why these former things are passing away? Because you have put on the spiritual consciousness of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in that nature, nothing passes away. We are crying because maybe someone we thought we lost something. We thought somebody died or somebody left us, or we are crying because things are changing, isn't it? Yeah. You look in the mirror, your hair is getting you know whiter. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I have to cut my hair almost two every every two days or so. Praise God. Yeah. And people are struggling and things are changing and, and the, the children are growing older and they are leaving you and, um, and you want to keep these things. It cannot be kept. Just accept it. It cannot be kept in this realm that we live in. But you can stand in a place by faith. Develop yourself. Jesus grew in stature. Amen. Amen. Develop your Amen. 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 You can go to that into that realm where nothing changes anymore. Where you just see you are seated on the throne before a glass sea, and all you see is the glory of God that never changes. But you have to make this decision for yourself because in Revelation it says, I Make all things new. All things are. It's you that have to do it. You have to hear this message. Oh, hallelujah. Job says that if you will hear this word and you will keep it up like dust of gold, you will keep it up like a treasure. You know, you keep it up like what? A treasure. This word that you are here. Amen? Amen. What will happen? It speaks of the glory that will come. You have to hear this word and treasure it and keep it. Hallelujah. And exercise yourself in it and confess it. Hallelujah. And let it become part of you. Then you will discover all things. It becomes a reality. From confession, it becomes reality. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I begin to feel the joy of your salvation. I become a savior of men. Amen. You know, Amen. you too can appear as Jesus to many. You know that? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Captain of our faith, but there are many captains under him who are doing the same, exact same thing that Jesus did. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Very important. Amen. Amen. Let us strive according to Paul. You see, every man, let me just say what Paul says. He says, Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And what are we trying to obtain? Let us see here. And every man that started from for the mastery is temperate in all things. How they how they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Now, have you seen somebody who wants a goal here? Who really wants something in life? You see how they they struggle to get that feeling on us. Who wants a gold medal? Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants a scholarship, somebody who wants a job, somebody who wants some you notice how they put so much effort to get it. But these things are still corruptible, temporal, and they all what pass away. So ours should be even be of a great to a greater what degree. Because what we what we, we strive for is something that is what eternal. Hallelujah. Something that is what eternal. And therefore so wrong, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beat the air, but I keep under my body, I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, least by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a what a cast away. Alright? There's something that Paul is saying here which is quite important. He's trying to say we should as we strive for mastery, as we strive in this new confession, as we strive in newness of life, in this new work, we should always put under subjection the flesh. Okay? Because any other thing, problem that will come out along the way comes from the flesh. The flesh. Always keeping it under subjection. And somebody gave me a clue once, a brother. He says, you must believe that you've already died thousands of years ago. You have to see that cross as you that was destroyed. That is the old man that was destroyed. You must by faith see through the eyes of faith that you were already dead. Okay? And that which lives in you today is the spirit. All right, and um, time is a very subtle thing. I've gone around, I've studied things, I watch the way years pass, days pass, months pass, and time is very deceitful. But we must come to know that now is, and there is no tomorrow. By faith, stand in the cloud. Take your place there forever and walk in this thing by faith. Praise God. Amen. Then yeah. every other thing becomes a reality. Okay? It's something that we must do. Put into action. Hallelujah. Faith in action. Something in motion right now. Something that is happening right now today. Amen. Yeah. It should be the concentration first. Then every other thing follows. Praise God. Hallelujah. You want a hall? Praise God. Hallelujah. You want anything? It will all fall into place. Because it is the Father's good will Amen. that you are, you are, you are applying. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the Lord keep you. Can we stand up?
Yeah. When you go outside, you look at the cloud. Particularly those of you that live in the areas where you have mountains. You look at the cloud and always remember that that is where you are. Okay? Yeah. Because he says, where I am is where you will be. It's consciousness. Okay? That's Mount Zion, the place of God, the dwelling of God. Only God dwells there, not a human being. Eh? There's God. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Glorify your God. We've heard so much, Father. 